So I'm going to jump into the message tonight. 1 Kings chapter 18. Now let me set this up just for a moment. This is a time that for three years it has not rained. How many of you would like three hours it didn't rain in Tiff County? <laughs> but it had been three years, so there had been a drought in the land. Uh, because of their sin, because of the things that happened around us, there has been a time of drought. Uh, the prophet said, the only time that will rain again is when I say the word for it to rain. He was given instructions by God because of their idol worship that there would be no rain upon the earth. And we see that God, by his love, nurture, and care, takes his hand off of situations sometimes and let the enemy come in and steal and kill and destroy, not to kill us, not to destroy us, but to bring us back to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so when we sin willfully, when we have weights in our life, when we have those things in our life, so there was a drought in the land for three years. And then Elijah went and told uh, Obadiah, he said, go tell Ahab that there is about to be a decision that has to be made, something that's got to be done and every decision in life that you make and everything in life that you truly make in your life has to be in that moment of prayer. Now, let, let me explain prayer a little bit. Prayer is not about just words that I say. Words that I say, yes, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does speak. But prayer is about worship. It's about uh, communion with God. It's about the will of God. It's about saying, God, if, I, if there's anything in my life that should not be there, forgive me, help me. Go through those moments in your life that you're simply saying, God, I want to spend time with you. So I'm going to ask everybody tonight to not think of prayer as just this something that you do, but it's something that you realize and you know that when I say that I'm about to pray, that means I'm about to spend time with God. It, it's a preparation that happens there that you simply say, I, I'm going to enter into His presence with worship. That's why the Lord's Prayer says it this way, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Holy is Your name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. So you're saying, God, not my will be done, not my stuff be done. You know, I, I think a lot of times we think prayer is giving God our laundry list and saying, God, make sure all the chores are done before I get off work because I just want to go and have fun after work. You know, and, and it's this moment that you get, but what you're saying is when you wake up in the morning, I want the will of God done in my life so much that every part of my day, my encounter at, you know, Hardy's, my encounter at, at first block, my encounter on my job, my encounter wherever I am and whatever I'm doing, that I'm going to make sure that I'm doing what God has called me to do. And so you're saying the will of God to be done. And then he tells you, he says, make sure that you ask for provision. How many of you know we have a good father that loves and cares for us? He knows every need of your life anyways. For some of you, you're praying for rains. For some of you, you're not praying for rains. For some of you, you're praying for a new job. And then you're, some of you are praying that just the job gets better. Some of you are praying for a new relationship. Some of you are praying for your relationship to be healed. And what God does by His grace, mercy, and love, He takes us into that and says, God, give us this day our daily bread. And then He talks about spiritual warfare that's there. Then there's other things that goes on there when we talk about prayer. And this gives us a time and a season in our life that there was a decision that had to be made. And I keep on going back to this, and I'm going to keep on going back to this all night long. How many of you know it's a decision to spend time with God? It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take 10 episodes. It's going to take knowing and understanding Him. 
It's going to take that moment in your life that you say, okay, I want to know God. I want to know His will. I want to walk in His steps. I want to make sure that the journey is real that I'm on. That this is not just a situation in my life that I'm doing because this is what I do. I just do church. I just do the gospel. I just read my devotion. I want to make sure my streak on my Bible app is up to date. It's not about that. It's all about making sure in life that I'm saying, okay, God, this is who I am. I want a relationship with you. Now notice this. It says, And in the time of the offering, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the God in Israel and that I am your servant. Now let me just stop there for just a minute. He's saying, This didn't start with me, but you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. So you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You're the God that called him out of Ur the Chaldees, and you spoke to him. And every time that there was a critical moment in his life, he made an altar to God because he knew that he could not make it past this critical moment in his life without a relationship with God. And let me go ahead and say this. Whatever you're going through right now, without an altar, you're not going to do the right thing. You're not going to say the right thing. You're not going to act the right way. You're just going to, it's not going to be good, okay? You can maybe fake it for a little bit, and you may go through the motions for a little bit, but you've got to have that moment in your life that you simply say these words, okay, God, I'm going to know what you're saying about this situation right now before I go another step. So, God, you're the God of Abraham. Abraham had faults and failures. Isaac had faults and failures. Israel had faults and failures. But if you will be their God, I know you'll be my God too. And so he tells them this. He says, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that the people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Now, this is a primary step here. How many of you have ever had to ask the Lord to forgive you? How many of you had to do it more than once? How many of you had to do it more than once today? (laughs) Lord, forgive me. Repentance is something so key, and I want you to see this. He's trying to bring the nation back toward God because where they were brought them in a three-year drought, and people were dying. Does it not sound like today that we're in the middle of a pandemic, and people are dying, and if they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they're going to spend the eternity in everlasting punishment. That they're opting out for suicide. They're opting out for everything else in their life. And saying, it's just not worth it. And I will tell you something today. True repentance is not this thing that I just say, well, I'm sorry and I don't change. True repentance is like this. See, there is no repentance without turning. See, you got to turn. You can't just say, I'm sorry, and then... You know, it, it, just imagine if you, you know, just your siblings, students, just your siblings, if you hit them, and then you said you're sorry, and you hit them again, you didn't mean it the first time, okay? You didn't mean it, because you were, you know, okay, if they do it again, I'm do- but repentance says that I'm sorry, and I'm not going to hit you again. I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm going to change what I'm doing right now. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the right thing at the right time. And I can say I'm sorry until I'm blue in the face, but it means that I'm going to turn and go a different direction and do what God's called me to do. Now, Elijah prayed, and we must pray too. Prayer changes me. It overcomes fear, sin, apathy, complacency, weights in every situation of my life. 
prayer is the first and best path that you can take to have true life in Jesus Christ. Elijah brought the nation to the mountain to build an altar so that they could pray, so that things could change. But God's saying, before the circumstance change, I'm going to change you. You're going to have to kill some things that's tried to kill you. You're going to have to change some ways that you're doing life right now. So the first thing, the first thing that in this decision, that, that the first thing I want you to see is that he had to make a decision for a nation. I want to say this to one student tonight. I want to say this to one married couple tonight. I want to say this to somebody online right now. You make a decision and people will follow. Good and bad. Right and wrong. You got to make a decision for your family tonight. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and this class, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and this team, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and whatever I'm doing right now, we're going to serve the Lord. So this one man went up against 450 prophets of the worst idolatry that you can even imagine. They didn't even try to hide it. They worship, you know, the nature. They worship, you know, the forms. They, they worship everything that you can imagine. And if that wasn't bad enough, they made up another God as Baal's wife called Asherah. And so they not only have one God that they worship that wasn't the true and living God. Now, this is supposed to be the people of God. This was people that was worshiping God and supposed to worship God. And they were worshiping Baal and Asherah and these things that were out there over and over again. And Elijah had enough and said, no more. I can't do this anymore. Let's go to the mountain. Now, I love this. He said, let's go to the mountain. I want everybody to be able to see it. Whether you climb with me, whether you're on the hillside, or whether you're in the valley, I want everybody to see this. There has to be a decision in your life that you make and say, I don't care who or what they say about me. As for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to worship. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give. I'm going to serve. Now notice this in verse 20. It says, so Ahab sent all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long would you, limp, would you go limping between two different opinions? I'm going to stop there. How many of you have got more than two in your family right now? More than two? More than two? How many of you know if you've got five in your family, you've got six opinions where you need to eat? Well, where do you want to go? I don't care. Lie. Liar. Because you will mention something and they will go, yeah. I just get something at the house. He's basically telling me, he said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sick of this. How many of you know it's okay for Christians to be sick of stuff sometimes? It's just, just sick. I'm sick of what's happening in families right now. I'm sick that students feel like there's no way out besides suicide. I'm sick of a society that says you can act anyway six days a week, and on Sunday you can act holy. I'm I'm sick. And he just says, it's time for the children of God to run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. It's time for us to mount up with wings as eagles. It's time for us to do great exploits for God. Well, pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand where I'm going. You don't understand the peer pressure that I'm under. You don't understand where I am. And he just simply says, let's go to prayer one more time. And just say, okay, let's go to Carmel one more time. Let's go to this moment in our life. Do you remember when you gave your heart to Jesus Christ and you went to that mountain and you said, you just simply said it this way, I surrender all. 
I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who leaves me. I don't care who comes. I don't care the temptation. I surrender all to Jesus Christ. He's my master. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. I don't care who sees me worship. I don't care who sees me serve. I don't care who sees me give. I just don't care. I've made a decision that I'm going to do the right thing, even if it's unpopular. Now notice this. It says, And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long are you limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the people, I love this. Bunch of sissies. Did not answer Him a word. Did not answer Him a word. They just, what do you think? There's too many people getting their theology from what do you think? <laughs> they, what, what do you think about that? I, 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 don't, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be not culturally, culturally relevant. I don't want to make you mad. You know, there's many gods. How many of you know there's only one God? There's only one way to heaven. Jesus Christ. That's not being mean. If the bridge was out and I knew you were about to cross the bridge and you were about to die and I said, do not go that way. There's another way. And it's going to lead to truth. It's going to lead to life. It's going to lead to the way that you need to go. And I was just, you would look at me and say, Pastor's not being mean. He just doesn't want them to die. He just wants them to live. Because you can fill your whole life with the stuff of this world and end up at the end of your life saying, I had nothing Grace and I were talking about a very wealthy man. He passed away a few years ago. His three kids were not even competent enough to run the empire that he left them. And I can just imagine he spent his whole life Building this empire that just in a few years was just faded away. Because you can gain the whole world. But if you have not settled your soul issue, nothing else matters. So prayer changes us. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Jesus said it this way. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one or despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, or mammon, another translation says. Let me just break it down this way. You cannot serve sin and self anymore if you say you're a child of God. You just can't. He's a jealous God. Can you imagine if a husband left his house on the way out, kissed his wife on the way out, and then he got to the work, and then he went through his workplace and kissed everybody there too. You would look at him and say, you have lost your mind. <laughs> Why do we think that we can wake up and pray the Lord's Prayer and then go out with the rest of our life and make a decision to kiss everything else of the world. Why in the world do we think that we can get to this place in our life that it doesn't really matter what I do six days a week? Because on the seventh day, I'm going to come in and raise my hands. I'm going to clap a little bit. I'm going to do that. I'm going to give a little bit. 
I, I'm going to serve a little bit. I'm going to do it a little bit. And this is the time, and this is where I'm, I'm, I'm just pushing us toward to. Not in legalism. Please know my heart. This, is, this doesn't have anything to do with legalism. It has everything to do with, does God have first in your life? Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Does God get first? So first thing is, prayer is a decision. But if you'll make that prayer as a decision, prayer that makes a decision and makes a difference brings the fire. Go with me to verse 38. It says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offerings and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell out on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Now, first, if you don't know the story, is the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, took the sacrifice first, cut it open, laid it on the altar. Elijah said, if your God is really God, He can answer by fire. They put water all around. They went for six hours. Six hours. Some of you think an hour and five minutes is a long time. I know that. These pagan prophets went for six hours dancing, yelling, screaming. It got so bad that they started cutting their self, asking the God Bell to, to hear them when they pray. Nothing was happening. Nothing was going on. Elijah said, hey... You've had long enough. He may be on vacation right now. How many of you know, in the Word of God, God's got some sense of humor? You think Christians are born, you don't know any good ones. He said, well, he, you know, he may have had to, you know, fix supper. He may have had to do all this. He, he, he just gives all this. And he says, okay, this is the point I want to bring you to. Because I believe the fire is going to fall. Jesus said it this way. By the words of John. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Whose sandal I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire. You're saying pastor. How many of you need a miracle in your life right now? Many of you need a, a healing in your life right now? How many of you know our nation needs a miracle and a healing right now? Fear is rampant. Disease is rampant. Religion is rampant. All these things are rampant all around us. They are all around us right now. And we need a miracle that comes from God. We need something to change in our life. So Elijah said, okay, I believe God can send the fire. And I believe that God can send the fire. Does anybody else believe that God can still answer the way that he answered right here? Do you, do you believe that? That's not a fairy tale. That's not just an, an analogy in the Bible. That's not just an illustration. I believe that this day on Mount Carmel, that the word of God said that God answered by fire. I believe that the sacrifice was completely consumed. I believe the water was consumed. I believe it happened just like he said it would happen. And I believe today that God's word is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Now, if I believe that, we've got to ask ourselves the question is, can the fire fall today? Yes. So why is the fire not falling today? And I believe because we don't have the fire within us. The fire can't not fall from heaven because we don't have the fire within us. You're saying, Pastor, what are you saying? I'm just simply saying that it's easy to take these broken empty vessels and fill them with pleasure and fill it with money and fill it with resources and fill it with our own way and God's asking us if you want to see the fire fall 
there's got to be a fire within you. There's got to be a moment within you that you say, God, let me go back to that first love encounter that I had with you. God, let me go back to a time that they didn't have to beg me to worship on Wednesdays. They didn't have to beg me to worship on Sundays. They didn't have to beg me to worship on Saturday. I just got up with something in my mind because Jesus saved me and I know where he's brought me from and I know where I am today. So I know within my spirit there's a fire within me. So I get up on Monday and I say these words, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will, the, 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 this first love that I'm driving around and I'm just thinking, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have the blessings and the prosperity and the favor that he's giving me right now. So you're, you're just going to have to stand back for just a moment and I'm going to have to turn off this and do this and I'm going to do this a little bit different right now. But I just got to say, hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And it may be as simple as that or you may sing all of hill song or whatever you sing or whatever you do but i will tell you today there comes a moment in your life that there's a fire within you so if i want to see the fire come down from heaven i've got to have a fire within me how do i know this because there's 120 that jesus said before y'all go anywhere else i know you've seen a lot i know i've taught you a lot i know these things have happened but for 10 days for 21 days, for 10 days, we're going to do it for 21 days. We need more help. For 21 days, we're going to say, God, renew the fire within me. God, renew the fire within me. God, renew the passion within me. I used to not think about what people would say when I would worship. I, went, I didn't care. I wasn't worshiping for them. This was not a performance. This was my position toward God that I know that I'm going to humble myself before God and he's going to exalt me in due season. God, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And so it's that moment. The last thing I want to tell you is, I want you to see this. First, it's the decision. Second, it's the fire. Third, it's the rain. In verse 41, it says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. Now, I've said it, I'm going to say it again one more time. After the fire came, Elijah said, you see the prophets of Baal? Now, this is not the politically correct version, okay? And I need to say this for people. There's a time in your life that you have to kill the idol so the idol won't kill you. Well, I like that story about them hurting me. You need to kill that idol. Well, I like that story. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm really, it's only one habit, and it's not a very bad habit. You just know it kind of interferes with your relationship with God, and now it's time to get rid of that habit you got to kill that bell. Now notice this. Go up and eat and drink for this sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up and ate and, and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he bowed himself to the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servants, go up now and toward, toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again, go again. Go again, go again, go again. If you're going to see the promises of God, you've got to know the promises of God and you've got to be persistent in the promises of God. You've got to know the promise of God and you've got to be persistent in it. You can't know what... We all love grandmother, praise God. But there comes a time you've got to know the Word of God for yourself. There comes a time that you say these words, i got to know this for myself. 
This can't be something that somebody has said to me or I thought a preacher said or I thought somebody on TV said or, you know, somebody actually quoted a scripture then cut somebody out, said on Facebook. Now, I got to know what it says for myself. I, I got to know. I got to know. Seven times, he kept on sending his servant back seven times. Go back one more time. Go back one more time. Go back one more time. How many of you think you went to the mountain one time? Say amen. How many of you think you've been two times? Say amen. How many of you think you've been three times? Say amen. How many of you have been a bunch of times to this mountain, but you're not quitting until it rains? You're not quitting until it rains. I'm not quitting until the spouse gets saved. I'm not quitting until the children come back home. I'm not quitting until God does exceedingly abundantly above what we even ask or think or can even imagine. So whatever I've got to do to get there, as long as there's breath in my body right now, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to serve the Lord with everything in me. And if it takes one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, I'm going to the mountain and I'm going to see the goodness of God. Just this past week, I brought my family in and I said these words to them. I said, I want you to know because they need to know that I struggled just like they do. And I said these words. And it comes out of Psalm 73. My foot slipped. I knew God had a promise for me. But my foot was slipping. I didn't want to pray about it one more time. I didn't want to talk about it another time. And then also I was trying to give God a way out. Anybody ever tried to give God a way out? God, now, I understand, God, if you, if you just can't do that, if you can't send fire down right now like that, uh, God, if you'll just send, like, a smoke. That's what I was doing. God, just send some smoke. I, I'm not asking for fire anymore. Just some smoke. Maybe cologne that smells like smoke. I, I, I mean, I was just struggling. I was just like, I don't know. And right in the middle of all that, God answered my prayer. But I needed to tell the other side of the story. Because my flesh was failing. But my spirit said, hang on one more day. Hang on one more day. You'll see the rain. Galatians 6, 9. A scripture we quote around here all the time. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, if you faint not, you will reap a harvest. Rain's coming. Rain's coming. Just make sure the fire is kindled, and you'll see the rain. I want you to bow where you are. Heavenly Father, God, I believe that you're going to do the work right now. God, online and in the sanctuary right now. People are wanting and, and to experience the fire of God in their life. They know that they need the fire. But they've allowed some weights and sins and complacency and apathy and fear to get in their way. So, God, tonight, we repent. We make a decision to say, God, bring fresh fire to our life. Bring fresh fire to our prayers. Bring fresh fire to our marriage, to our callings, to our serving, to our giving. God, we believe that you want to do the work. 
So God, do the work. I want you to stay with your head bowed and your eyes closed and online. If you'll stay with us just another moment. I want you to make an altar right there where you are. And if you want the fire to be rekindled in your life right now, just make an altar and say, God, I bow before you right now. One time, two times, three times. God, whatever it takes, I want to see the fire. I want to see it change. I want to see hearts changed. Joining us at UGC Life Online, we are so encouraged that our services are reaching people all around the world. If you gave your heart to God today, or God is doing something amazing in your life, we would love to hear about it. You can text the word UGC Life to 474747 and get connected with us so that we can help you with your next steps. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to UGCLife.com and hit the Give button. We appreciate your generosity as we continue to bring healing, hope, and help to our community. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you next week.